wow, wow, wow. And King Jesus is risen. He's risen. Come Indeed, on, give them a high five. Give them a high five. Wish them a happy Easter. Happy give Easter, mommy, happy Easter to you all. Daddy, give your bro a high five. High five, there yes. There is a reason to celebrate the Lord Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Well, my name is Teacher Angel together with... Teacher Jerome. And, and I'm glad that you're able to join us for this wonderful and awesome Sunday service. Yes, it is a season of celebration. And being happy. Yes, but before we proceed, let us pray. Hands, Hands together, together, eyes closed. Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you that you are able to celebrate, that you have risen, and, Father, that you live. We pray that, Lord, even as we rejoice in your name, give us the joy, give us, Lord, <clears throat> the happiness, and may we uh, find peace in it. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen! Amen. Amen. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Get up, get up, get up on your stretch feet. A bit, get up on your a bit. feet. And now it's time for us to join the Olives Choir for praise and worship. Yes. Hello, children. Welcome for today's online service. But guess what? Today is Easter. Woo. Yes. But before we enjoy our praise and worship, let us first pray. Hands together. Eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for today, Father, as we worship you, knowing that you died for our sins, oh, Father, King of you, on, on the cross, we just want to say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray, we give.
worship you, Lord, you're glorified. Thank you so much, Olive Squire, for that awesome, awesome session. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, me personally, I enjoyed it. Wow, me it's too, me to too. Yes. And now, children, are you ready? We are ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? ready? We are ready. We are about to watch a video. Yes. That is to educate us. About what Easter is all about. Easter? What events happened on Easter day? Ah. Teacher Jerome, are you eager? I'm eager. I to want to watch it. Yes. I want to see and know. Many of our friends are there. Ask yes. themselves, what is Easter? 
I think it's all about eating. Oh. Was, was it a bath there for Jesus? I don't know. Maybe let's watch the video and see. Yes, let's watch the video and okay. find out the truth about Easter. Easter. Let's go. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when Jesus was led to Golgotha by the soldiers for his crucifixion. His cross was in between two thieves who were also being crucified that day. Before putting Jesus on the cross, the soldiers offered him wine, which was mixed with myrrh and would numb his senses. But Jesus refused it. The soldiers took off his clothes and threw a dice to see which one of them would get to keep his robe. A sign which said, This is Jesus, King of the Jews, was hung at the top of his cross. People who came to watch him being killed shouted, He saved other people, let him save himself. Go ahead, King of the Jews, save yourself. The soldiers continued to make fun of him and kept on offering him drinks of sour wine. One of the thieves on his side said, you say you are the Messiah, then prove it by saving yourself and us too. But the other thief on his other side said, Don't you fear God, even when you're dying? You and I deserve to die for the bad things we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, remember me when you come to rule. Jesus said, You will be with me this day in heaven. Jesus' mother was there in the crowd with other women and watching all this happening. Jesus saw her standing near one of his disciples, whom he loved very much. He looked at his mother and said, Woman, he is your son. Then he turned to his disciple and said, From now, she is your mother. By now, it was almost noontime. Even then, the sky grew dark and the entire land was in complete darkness until three in the afternoon. Jesus looked up in the sky and called out, My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Then he shouted, Father, into your hands I put my spirit. And died. Suddenly, the thick veil that hung in the temple was torn apart from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and graves broke open. When the captain of the guard saw all this happening, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. All of Jesus' friends who were watching the crucifixion went home with hearts filled with sadness. The religious leaders did not want the bodies hanging on the crosses the next day because it was the Sabbath. So they asked Pilate to hurry up with the deaths by breaking their legs. The soldiers broke the legs of the two criminals, but seeing that Jesus was already dead, they did not break his legs. However, one of the soldiers stuck his spear into Jesus' side, and blood and water flowed out. A man named Joseph from Arimathea asked Pilate if he could bury Jesus' body in a brand new tomb that no one had been buried in yet. He was given permission to take Jesus' body down, while other people brought ointments and perfumes to put on the body which was the Jewish custom before burial. They wrapped Jesus in special strips of cloth for burial and laid him in the tomb that was like a large cave. A heavy stone was rolled in front of the opening of the tomb. 
Mary Magdalene and the other woman named Mary stood nearby and saw all of this happen. So, did you all like the story? I did! All right, all right. Today's story is about Jesus going home. Huh? Jesus had a home? No, Jesus' home was heaven. He had no home like us. Am I right, Holy? Why don't we find that out in the story? Jesus' disciples and his followers were thrilled that he was alive again. They had hoped of a better future because he was alive. They kept asking him questions about when he was going to free Israel and set up his kingdom. They did not clearly understand what Jesus had been actually teaching them. My father sets all the plans for his kingdom. I don't even know his plans. Jesus told them. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive immense power. You will tell people about me, my work, and my teachings. You will tell people right here in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the whole world. Jesus told them. Not long after telling them these things, Jesus was taken up to heaven in front of their eyes while they watched. He disappeared into the clouds and the disciples strained their eyes trying to see where he had gone. While they were still looking, they suddenly saw two men in bright white robes standing with them. One of the men said, What are you looking for? Jesus isn't here. He has been taken away and has gone to heaven. Someday, he will come back in just the same way he left. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Let's then begin with the story. I am sure you are all going to love it, especially you, Freckles. Early morning on that following Sunday, Mary Magdalene and few other women came to the tomb where Jesus was buried. They hadn't been able to prepare Jesus' body for burial because of the Sabbath. And now that it was over, they could put their offerings of oils and perfumes on him. When they left town to go to Jesus' tomb, the women wondered about how they would move the heavy stone from the opening of the tomb. But when they reached the tomb, they were amazed. The stone had already been moved. The women rushed into the tomb, only to find that Jesus' body was nowhere around. They were confused. Suddenly, two men appeared who were dressed in bright white robes. The women were terrified to see them, but the two men, who were angels, said, Why are you looking inside a tomb for someone who is alive? The one you are looking for isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Do you not remember that he told you? He would be crucified and come back to life on the third day? The women then remembered Jesus saying that in one of his teachings. Mary Magdalene was standing outside the tomb, trying to understand what might have happened. She started crying when she saw a man standing nearby. The man asked her, Why are you crying? Mary said, Sir, please tell where have they taken his body. I will go and get him. Mary. The man gently said. That is when she realized that it was no one else but Jesus. The women along with Mary Magdalene rushed back to town to tell Jesus' disciples that he was alive. The disciples ran to the tomb as fast as they could to see if it was true. 
Peter ran into the tomb and found the strips of cloth that were used to wrap around Jesus' body were lying neatly folded. He was nowhere there in the tomb. He was alive! That was the best story ever! I am so, so happy! Today I'm going to tell you the story about Jesus getting anointed by Mary. So, are you children ready for it? Oh yes, we are! Jesus was sent to earth by God, his Father, for a specific reason. He was sent to the earth to help people to connect with God. The end of this plan led to Jesus taking the cross for the sins of the people. He tried over and over to tell his disciples that he was going to die, but they failed to understand his message. Now, the end of his time on earth was coming near, and it was very important for them to understand quickly. Jesus knew that his ministry on earth is going to get over soon enough. He tried telling his disciples about what was coming, but he never really understood. One night, Jesus and his disciples were having dinner at Mary's house with her sister Martha and Lazarus. Martha served dinner and while they were eating, Mary brought a jar of very expensive perfume. She went up to Jesus and slowly poured the perfume on his feet and wiped them dry using her own hair. The sweet fragrance of the perfume filled up the entire house. Jesus' disciples watched Mary doing this. Some of them got very upset. Judas Iscariot said, What a waste of money. This expensive perfume could have been sold for a lot of money and that money could have been used to help the poor. Judas did not really care about the poor. He was in charge of the disciples' money and he often stole from their funds for his own use. Jesus had an answer for Judas's concern. He said, Don't stop her from doing such a good thing for me. You will always have poor people around you, but I will not be here much longer. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I promise that whenever my stories are told throughout the world, this woman's deeds will be mentioned.
Wow, I hope you've watched the video and learned something about Easter. Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. All, we have seen everything that happened from the crucifixion, how he was betrayed, all the events that took place up to when he was crucified. Even do you remember what the thief said on the cross down on the right hand side? I hope you watched the video. So then later, we watch him being crucified. He dies and then rises after three days. Rises after three days. So that's what Easter is all about. We, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And I yes. hope you enjoy that dance special from Auntie Julian of that song to sing. Yeah. To sing. Yeah. Well, then, you thank you, Jesus. So there is a reason to appreciate Jesus for what he did. Hey, Uncle Jerome, can you die for someone? Can you accept to be crucified? Uh, like, to I don't go think so. All that pain. Huh? I don't think so. Jesus is indeed a special person. Special person indeed. Yes. yes. So now grab your pen, grab your pen. So don't forget your notebook and your Bible. It's time for us to dive into our lesson with teacher patience. patience. Let's go. Let's go. Praise the Lord, children. You're welcome once again to today's service. I'm Teacher Patience, and I'm glad to share with you God's word. This month, we've been looking at the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yeah, before we start, let's humble ourselves and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here today again to listen to your word. Help us to understand your word and be able to accept you into our hearts, that we may become children of God. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. So children, if you were with us last week, you remember that we learned about how God had a plan for Jesus to come and die for us, right? It means that even before man sinned, even before Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit and sin came into the world, God already had a plan to bring us back to him and continue to call us his children, yes? Because he loved us very, very much. And from that, we learned that God also has a plan for your life because he even knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. It means that we should trust him in each and every single thing that we do. So for today's lesson in particular, we're going to be looking at Jesus Christ being crucified. You know what being crucified means? We'll find out. Yeah, so before, let's look at before Jesus died. Yes? How was life? How was life before Jesus died? Here we're mostly looking at life in the Old Testament, right? So we see that in the Old Testament, like I had, for those that were watching last week, we talked about how man sinned, Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, then they were chased out of the Garden of Eden. But this was the beginning of sin. This is when sin came into the world, when sin corrupted the hearts of people and people became evil, people said killing each other. I don't know, fighting, wars began, worshipping idols, all the bad things you know out there. So, in that process, God still wanted to have, to have us as his children, right? So before he sends Jesus, he first had a way to communicate with people, but this was not directly. You could not just go to God and be like, God, today I'm sorry, I don't feel like doing this, today I did this. You couldn't just talk to God on a one-on-one -on -one basis. There was always a middleman, right? A person who goes, talks to God, and then goes back to the people and tells them what God has said, right? But this person had to be righteous. It means this person had to be obeying God. Every single commandment that God made, they had to be following, you know, following them one by one, like trying to live an upright life. And then, yeah, so these people were mostly called priests right? They officiated offerings and sacrifices. Back in the day when, let's say God was going to forgive your sins, they had to be sacrifices. Like, they had to actually cut animals and do some kind of sacrifices there to, to sort of forgive us and wash away our sins. Eh? But those were our ancestors, those days of Abraham, Moses, Elijah, those days. There was a lot of sacrifice of animals and 
things that when God had ordered them, he gave them commandments and laws to follow on how to carry out these sacrifices. But these things were only done by the priests. And then, yeah, of course we've said the priests were the only people to go before God. And if it so happened that these priests had also not lived righteous lives, when they went before God, they would be struck dead. So imagine the priest goes to God to listen to what God has to tell his people, and then he dies instead. That means people don't get the message at the end of the day. Then next, we also had punishments. God used to punish very severely. It was not like today where they tell you, when you sin, you'll be punished, and you don't see anything happening. Okay? Maybe if you kill someone, they can arrest you, but that's where it stops. Nothing happens to you as a person. But back in that day, if you look at Noah's time, when God told Noah to build an ark, Noah kept telling people, repent, turn back to God, listen to God, listen to what the people of God tell you. And people will be like, no, for you're just a mad old man. But then what does God do? God, God made it rain and the whole earth flooded. So the only people who survived were Noah and his family and then two of each animal. On the whole earth, imagine a flood that covers even these buildings that we are in. Covers your house, covers the mountains, covers every single thing. So that's how the people died. Then you also look at um, there are people when the Israelites were moving in the wilderness, going to the promised land. There's a group of, should I call them young men or men, who doubted Moses. They started questioning Moses' leadership. And yet Moses was the one who was giving them the message from God. He was the person that God had anointed to lead the Israelites. And then what did God do? God got angry with these people. And he opened the ground. Like, the ground just opened and swallowed these people. Swallowed their families, their animals, their everything they had. Then we also have the rain of burning sulfur. That was fire from the sky. Fire. And it burnt an entire city. So that was how extreme God's punishment was back then. So, now coming to the crucifixion. We know that Jesus came to die for our sins, right? Yeah. So let's open our Bibles to Mark 15, 21 to 32 and see what it talks about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 15, from verse 21 to 32. And it says, On the way, they met a man named Simon who was coming into the city from the country. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called mar, but Jesus would not drink it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get which piece of clothing. It was nine o'clock in the morning, they crucified him. The notice of accusation against him said, the king of the Jews. They also crucified two bandits with Jesus, or two thieves with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and howled insults at Jesus. Ah, you are going to tear down the temple and build it up again in three days. Now come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law jeered at Jesus saying to each other, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. And the two who were crucified with Jesus insulted him also. So children, we know that Jesus' day on the cross was to save us, right? It was to take away our sins. But you see what's happening. We know that Jesus was beaten. He was abused. He was... They put on him a crown of thorns. Let's see this picture. They've tried to to imagine how Jesus was back in that day. There is a crown of thorns. They crucified him. This crucifixion was on a, on a cross, yes? They put him on a wooden cross and nailed him. We see here they've nailed his hands. Like they've hammered a nail through the palm of his hands. Then for some, they showed the legs also. So it means they nailed his hands onto the wood. Let's say if it's like here. And then also the legs. So he's suspended in the air. And he's hanging on by those nails that have passed through him. Then because they've beaten him also, there was blood everywhere. They threw off his clothes, so he was almost naked. 
and he was in so much pain. You can imagine how painful that was, right? People continued to abuse him. Other people were saying, you were the Messiah. Now see, you've died. You can't even help yourself. So people abused him thinking he was just an ordinary man who claimed to be good. But then what, does, what happens when Jesus actually dies? If you continue to read in that story, we see there was darkness, right? Darkness happens. It was like in the afternoon, I think. And everywhere became dark, like it's night. And then you see in the temple, there was a curtain, yes? A curtain where... The holy people, like we say, the people who would represent everyone else before God, they would go there also to, you know, talk to God and come back with a message. So the curtain that was separating that place from where everybody else gathers, it was torn in half, right? And then, so what does this mean for us, as the people? For us as children of God, as the children whom God came to die for, Jesus came to die for, right? What does this mean for us? Remember at the beginning we said, when Adam and Eve sinned, the connection between man and God was lost, right? It means you could not talk to God directly. You as you, me as patients, I could not go to God and be like, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. I had to use somebody else to do that, yes? But when Jesus died, that was the end of that phase. It was like, we've been restored to God. So you as an individual, you're able to talk to God today. You're able to talk to Jesus, able to talk to God, you know. Wherever you find time to pray from, you can talk to him, right? And also, we see that the, the punishments that were extreme stopped. God stopped flooding the earth or raining fire or opening the ground to swallow us whenever we do bad things, yes? He has given us time to turn back to him, time to come back, to realize our sins, and actually repent, right? Repent and acknowledge that he is good and that he loves us so much, right? So what do we learn from all this? We learn that God has forgiven us, right? He, because God loves us so much, he took time to come up with a plan to redeem us even after we sin against him. I don't know if that makes sense. Like in the beginning, you saw Adam and Eve ate the fruit, which was against God's orders, right? then that's when sin gets into the world. But even after this sin has gotten into the world and we've been separated from God, he sends Jesus Christ, his only son, by the way, to come and die for us and then take away all our sins. So it means that when you accept Jesus into your heart, his blood is going to wash away all your sins. If you've ever stolen something, if you fought with your brother, if you abused somebody, you just have to repent apologize to those people also, accept Jesus into your heart, and also decide not to do that thing again, right? And that's when you become a child of God, right? And yeah, the other thing I hadn't said, when, when Jesus died, we got eternal life. This means, let's say after you die from like today to day in this physical world, you get a chance to live on after death, right? That's what we call eternal life. So there's a place in heaven for you and I, only if you accept Jesus into your heart. So our memory verse for today is John chapter 3, from verse 14 to 16. John chapter 3, from verse 14 to 16. So as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way, the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. So that's the other thing that Jesus did for us. When Jesus died, we got eternal life. When you accept Jesus into your heart, turn away from your old ways, you know that you have eternal life. It means you get a chance to live forever after you've actually died on earth here. So that's the end of our lesson today. Be reminded that God loves you so much. And no matter how, how bad you think your life is or the amount of bad things you think you've ever done, God still has room to forgive you. He still has space in his heart for you. And each and every day is a celebration when you accept to be Jesus, to be part of the kingdom. And yeah, in case you feel convicted today to let go of your old ways, let go of stealing all the evil thoughts and you want to stop sinning and 
gain eternal life like the people like Jesus' word says humble yourselves and say these words after me okay dear lord jesus thank you for today thank you for the sacrifice that you made to come and take away our sins oh lord i pray that you come into my heart transform me to be the child that you want me to be that i'll be able to do only the things that please you and continue to seek after you in jesus name i've prayed and believed amen so that's it for today see you next sunday goodbye whoa 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 yeah thank you so much teacher patience for that awesome session indeed yes i have learned a lot about easter me too have learned a lot in the lesson i hope you have yes. now it's time for us to go through our, our memory, memory verse oh, yes who can guess where our memory verse is coming from can you guess mm. ah Look. Look, yes, yes, that's right. I was attentive in class. Our memory verse is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, from verse 6 to 7. Yes. He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the that day, rise again. Yes. Now, let us say it with actions. Are you ready? Born Action! Ready. First jump and do like this. Are you ready? Get some set. Yes. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. Remember what he told you. Remember what he told you? While he was still with you in Galilee. While he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man. The Son of Man. Must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Be crucified. Be crucified. And on the third day. And on the third day. Rise again. Rise again. Let us say it one more time. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 to 7. He is not here. He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. Remember what he told you. Remember what he told you. While he was still with you in Galilee. While he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of Judah. The Son of Man must be delivered over. Crucified, crucified, and on the third day, he rise the again. Third day, rise again. Yes, I hope you take time and memorize it even further. Yes, and as we draw close to the end of this service, do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and also to give us all thumbs up. Yes, and I also bring you greetings from our lead pastor, Pastor Charles Obwana. Yes. That's all we had for you. Till next time. Happy Bye. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.